Okay, your warm-up question. Remember, there's going to be review on your quiz that is on Thursday. How can the carrying capacity of a population for a particular area change? How does the carrying capacity change? Not necessarily the population itself, but how does the carrying capacity change? There are multitudes of reasons why this could happen. How does a carrying capacity change? Essentially, okay, if we were to look at a graph, we see exponential growth going along, and then something like this happens. So we had a carrying capacity here, and then we have a carrying capacity here. I have the wrong binder. Yes. What could make it change to down here, Maggie? If they change into a smaller Stella? Um, if like one of their main food sources goes away. Okay, so one of their main food sources goes away. So they're going to decrease dramatically. What's another reason? Um, they run out, they lose a lot of space for them. Okay, they lose a lot of space. Say uh, human interaction comes in and tears down, uh, you know, cuts down a bunch of trees and their their shelter is now limited so their space they squeezing in that space and now you know they decrease dramatically and they have to kind of level back out Hudson, what else uh the, some of them could uh em emigrate emigrate or emigrate you mean with the e right yeah because that means they exit the area so there you go it's going to um exit an area well, I don't know that uh, their immigration would necessarily change the carrying capacity, though. Right? Because the area may still be able to support them. They've just left. So these are more of our limiting factors, right? Food, space, shelter, water. If they can't get it, okay, and the area is no longer supporting them, then their carrying capacity will decrease. Okay, so these are things that we should not forget for your quiz on Thursday. Limiting factors, how to read exponential and logistical growth curves. Okay, I do want to take a moment to show you if you're absent, okay, if you're absent from class, one of the things with um, Blackboard is that all you really see are assignments and I think that's the way most of y'all are looking at it okay if you go in you're like what's due today um, so then maybe you're missing some class videos or other things that have been posted that are not necessarily assignments so I need everyone's attention because there will come a time where you miss a day and you need to know what we did for class okay and so I want you to see into Blackboard and you click on topics for, for science, you'll need to remember number one, which topic we're under. Okay, so right now, if you're looking for the study guide, you can go under interactions among living things and you'll be able to see the study guide. Okay, what I've started doing, because I think it's easier Perhaps you'll still be able to find assignments, but for all of you, if you are absent, this is what I'm going to expect that you're looking for. Okay, I'm gonna give you a day recap. So on 927, so yesterday, students answered the warm-up question, list three abiotic factors. Okay, so now we have no reason that when we come back, we're gonna to have to look at our, our neighbor's paper because it's written in Blackboard. Okay, and then yesterday you completed the secondary succession, cut and paste, it's linked right here. Okay, it says be sure that both activities are completed. And then the picture that you saw yesterday that I had posted up here was linked as well. And then please upload pictures, this is for students who were remote. Okay, and then you guys had time to begin building your study guide. Okay, so there's the succession activity, and then there's your study guide. 
okay. Let's see, the day before, and I'm gonna try and make it to where this stuff is at the top, so then you don't have to um, go all the way to the bottom. Let's see. Same thing down here. Okay, so again, I'm gonna start posting these at the top. We have a new topic that we are working under now, okay, because we're gonna take notes. Okay, so at, under this topic, this is already kind of set up for students who are out today. And then I just have to link a few things. So there is your warm up question. We're going to take notes from the PowerPoint slides. I link the PowerPoint slides. So if you need to go back because you feel like you've missed something, it will be linked here. And then the class video that I'm recording right now will be linked here. Okay, so you can find it all in one spot. You know exactly what you have to do for the days that you've missed. Does that make sense? Yeah. And if you cannot find it, then you need to email me. Okay, Ms. West, where's the day recap? And I'll tell you it's under topic. And today we're starting energy flow through, um, through systems. So that's where you'll be able to find it. Okay, it's a new topic that has been posted. I hope that will be helpful instead of having to go all over the place. I don't really know what you do when you're not here. If you're looking at just assignments or if that's the only thing that's important because then you're missing videos. All right, but let's take some notes. So, give me out some paper. Energy flow and ecosystems. Now, some of this stuff, okay, you have heard these things before. Everybody needs out a piece of paper. We work towards a piece of paper, a pencil, pen. at the top of your piece of paper that doesn't have to you know take up a ton of space I want you to list the different types of food you ate last night for dinner okay what did you eat last night for dinner you can write down three go ahead jot them down three things that you ate last night for dinner if it was one main thing just write it down This is always like the funny part of like, I don't remember. I don't really remember what I had for dinner either, but. I remember. You had what? Panera. Okay, now under those items, I want you to write the name of the plant, animal, or other organism that was the source of that food. <clears throat> so if you had chicken, that came from a chicken. If you had bread, that came from wheat. Okay. What did you know? Wheat. Wheat. Unless you had chickpeas. That's a negative. Right. Lettuce. example here, some foods have more than one source. More than one sources. Some foods have more than one source. It should say source. For example, if you had macaroni and cheese, okay, that contains flour from wheat. 
and cheese from an animal. Okay, did you know that cheese comes from an animal? Sometimes this is like always like surprising to students. Like, wait, what? Okay, yes, milk, right? That came from an animal. Okay, and then how many of your food sources were plants? And then how many came from animals? So what was your protein source? Yes, how many of your food sources were plants? How many were animals? Okay. What did you get? How many of you have, what did you have for dinner last night, Abigail? I have chicken tacos. Okay, so what, what did you have on your tacos? Lettuce and chicken. Lettuce and chicken, all right. And then you had a, was it a, was it a hard shell or soft shell? Uh, I didn't need it in a shell. You didn't need it in a shell? Yeah, because right. I do not like the, like thought of tortillas makes me want to throw up. Oh my gosh. Okay. So no no tortillas for you. Do you like tortilla chips? Uh-huh. Okay. I just don't like I don't like the texture. Okay, do you like biscuits? Yeah. Do you know they're just the same thing? Yeah, but I just can't say Okay, the, the texture. Okay, okay. Okay, so you have chicken, listen. Chicken was your, your protein, right, from the animal, and then lettuce comes from lettuce. Weston, what did you have? I had a, a chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A. Okay, so the, you had chicken, then you had the bread, yeah. right, which is a was wheat, yeah. flour, and then you had your french fries, which are potatoes. Yes, potatoes. Did you have pickles on it? Oh, no pickles. Oh, but then there was butter, right? Butter on the bun. So there's your, there's another animal source. Lydia, what did you have? Uh, like ribeye, mashed potatoes, green beans, and salmon. Okay. So salmon, pure source, right? Not processed at all. And then what else did you have? Uh, Wait, what? what else did you have? You had salmon. Oh yeah, uh, mashed potatoes. Okay, so potatoes and green beans. Good, they're both from plants. Okay, boys at the back. I'm gonna have to ask you to separate if we can't focus, please. Okay, so the whole purpose of this activity, we eat, right? We eat food. Why do we eat food? Someone raise your hand and tell me. Hudson. Energy. Energy. Okay, that's it. That's key. Now, God in His great graciousness to us has created food for our enjoyment as well okay it's not just we eat because man i need energy it's not always what we're thinking okay uh food is to be enjoyed that's the way god created it it's not all bland it has flavor and it has different color and so that is something for us to enjoy because we serve and we are created beings under a good God, okay? So we get to enjoy food. Also, in that enjoyment, it serves another purpose, and that is to give us energy, okay? And so um, when we eat, that's what a calorie is. A calorie is considered energy. Now, oftentimes, when people are trying to lose weight or gain weight, then they will go um, and increase their calories or decrease their calories yes okay and then the more calories that you burn means that you're going to lose weight if you are burning more calories than you're intaking right okay so this is all about an energy balance are you taking in too many calories that you are not burning off okay in that case you're going to gain weight and then the opposite is true if you're trying to lose weight okay but we have to think about it like energy Okay, so energy rolls. So the whole purpose of a food web, food chain, okay, is to show you where is energy moving. 
So before we even go any further, a lot of the vocab words that you will take in your notes today, you've seen before. But I want you to think about it in a little bit of an elevated light, as in when we're talking about producer and consumer and um, herbivore and all of that. Okay, that you're thinking like, what do they consume for energy? How is energy passed on to this organism? And then how much energy is passed on, okay? All right, energy roles. An organism's energy role is determined by one, how it obtains energy, and two, and how it interacts with other organisms. So you can go ahead and write this down. I'm going to look at them. you ate last night originated from energy from the sun okay the, some it's been passed along energy was captured from the sun and you ate it these organisms plants algae and some bacteria use the sun's energy to turn water and carbon dioxide into food molecules in a process called photosynthesis <laughs> those food molecules are the glucose okay it's the sugar right and so the main thing here that I want you to get is that energy enters most ecosystems as sunlight. Do we have to write this down? 
What's that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it. This is just, this is the, this is photosynthesis right here. Turn the sun's energy, water and carbon dioxide into glucose. <clears throat> Last year, when we talked all about cellular respiration and photosynthesis, we went over this a lot. Okay. So we talked a lot about it, about photosynthesis on the um, molecular level. Okay, we talked about the chemical formulas and the chemical equations. Uh, for carbon dioxide and water and glucose and how it was made and what was being taken apart and put back together and energy was being stored in those in the making of those um, those products okay so when glucose is made in this process energy is stored in those bonds Producer, a producer, go ahead and write it down, a producer, this is a quick definition, okay, an organism that can make its own food, they are the source of all food in an ecosystem, okay, a producer, an organism that can make its own food, they are the source of all the food in an ecosystem. Is this one yet or quiz? This is not on your quiz, that's Thursday now. This is what I want. We're going to go a little bit rogue here, but a producer is also known as, aka, an autotroph. Go ahead and write that in. They are also known as an autotroph. Producers. So the producers that we know of, yes, they, they produce their own food based off of the sun, but there are some exceptions. Some producers obtain energy from a source other than the sun. For example, certain bacteria produce their own food deep under the ground from sulfate. You don't have to write this one down. I just want you to know that. Like, okay, well, what are these other sources if the sun is not the primary source for all organisms? Well, um, those organisms that are deep, deep, deep under the ground, they're not getting access to the sun. It's coming from sulfate. It's coming from cracks underneath the ocean, okay, where there are thermophilic bacteria and they can then make their own food deep in the, in the ocean where there is no sunlight. Then we have a consumer. We have producer, consumer, decomposer. 
consumers, organisms that obtain energy by feeding on other organisms because it cannot make its own food. Okay, and consumers are going to be their own like category here. So we have producers, nothing's underneath it other than they're gonna produce food from the sun, not all, but most. Okay, then we have the, the, the second energy role is a consumer. You and I are consumers. We cannot make our own food. We must obtain energy by feeding on other organisms. Okay, and then we have three subcategories that go underneath consumers. And you will get a definition for an herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, but they're not very long. And I'm sure that it, you could write them right now without me even flipping over to the slide. Because this is just how do they get or what do they eat in order to obtain their energy. So herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores, those are those three subcategories under consumers. Consumers that eat only plants. These are consumers that eat only plants. Even if you are a vegetarian, you are not an herbivore. Okay? You have the capacity to eat meat. Consumers that eat only or only eat plants. Carnivores, consumers that eat only meat, okay, spiders and lions. We don't necessarily think of spiders as being carnivores, but they are. Consumers that eat only meat, spiders, lions. Are there Again. people that do that in the world that only eat meat? Mm -hmm. Like humans? It's actually called a carnivore diet. Okay, and then there's a little subcategory for carnivores, okay? And those are scavengers, and they're carnivores that feed on the bodies of dead organisms. Okay, so it's not alive. It's been dead and rotting for a little while. That's what they love. Not like a lion goes and hunts and kills its prey and then eats it. Yes, it's dead. Like we all eat dead organisms, right? But this is, um, that's been like rotting. Nice and gross. Consumers that eat plants and animals. then we have our final category of energy roles. So remember, if you're kind of 
thinking about this in your mind. You've got producers, you have consumers, and under consumers we have those little subcategories. And then the third and final energy role that can be filled is a decomposer. Okay, the world doesn't go round without a decomposer. They break down waste and dead organisms <clears throat> and return the raw materials to the ecosystem. They are nature's recyclers. They obtain energy for themselves <clears throat> while returning simple molecules to the environment, which can be used again by other organisms. So it's kind of wordy. Um, this is what they do. Here's just a further explanation of that. So this is what they do. You can write that. They break down waste and dead organisms and return the raw materials to the ecosystem. Can we not write this anymore? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. They do obtain, they, so they obtain energy for themselves while they break down the waste. Okay. But. So we say raw materials. Does anybody know what we're talking about? What does it mean that a decomposer is going to um, return raw materials to the ecosystem? Okay, dead things. Yes, the things are dead. But what does it mean? Okay, if a tree is decomposing, okay, there are things that are working on it in order for it to decompose. But what does that mean? Does it still look like a tree after, say, a hundred years? No. What What's happened to it? Okay, it breaks down into soil. When it breaks down, is it just disappearing? No. No. Okay, it's going into the soil. But the tree itself has been made up of something, right? And this is where chemistry comes in. This is where the glucose, which is C6, H12, O6, yeah? Okay, the CHO, all of those little carbons and hydrogens and oxygens, they're being broken down, nitrogen, phosphorus, okay, into raw materials. When we say raw materials, we're just talking about the elements that went together previously and built that tree are now being broken down and replenish the soil, the nutrients in the soil. Okay, it's like if you had built a Lego tree and each one of those pieces represent, represented an element, and then decomposers get to it because now it's dying, and you are breaking them apart, and it's returning to the soil. Okay, it can be used to build something else. Does that make sense? Okay. So examples of decomposers are mushrooms and bacteria. I'd love for you to write that example down. But you don't have to write this. It's just rehashing what we said just a second ago. Decomposers are needed in order to release the raw materials, the little Lego blocks, from wastes in the body of dead organisms. Now, it says waste also, so poop from animals is also used to, to uh, decompose and then also to fertilize the soil. All right, so this following activity we're just gonna to do together as a class. You don't have to write it down, but I do need your attention. Okay, so it says describe the following animals as either a producer, consumer, or decomposer. So these are the energy roles that they can fill. And then for the consumers, remember there are those subcategories. So if it is a consumer, then you have to also give me that little subcategory. An herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore. Okay, and then what's the other little category under carnivore? Scavenger. Okay, some of them just feed on dead organisms. Okay. Okay, a bear. Uh, Weston, what's a bear? Producer, consumer, or decomposer? Okay, let's see that does a does a bear make its own food? Uh, 
So it can't be a producer. Right, you can put it in. Does it break down right. dead things? No. No, it's a consumer. It's a consumer. But then what type of consumer is it? Does it just eat plants? Does it eat meat only? Or do they eat both? Good. So a bear is a consumer that is an omnivore. What about a shark? Gob. Producer, consumer, decomposer. Consumer, good. And then what do they eat? Uh, they don't eat plants. Good. They're a carnivore. Excellent. A shark is a consumer that is a carnivore. A lot of times you can think about what kind of teeth does the animal have. Nice sharp teeth are not used for eating lettuce, okay? But then we have the rabbit, Luke. Consumer. Good. So a rabbit is a consumer that is an herbivore. So, yes, sir. So, what would like a carnivorous plant be? Like could be a black rabbit or something. Would that be a producer and a consumer? Yeah. But they, yes. Which is kind of crazy, right? Charlie, a cherry tree. Is a producer. Is a producer. It makes its own food. A mushroom. Hudson. Uh, that is a decomposer. Good. Okay, a human hunter. They are a consumer and an omnivore. Good. Okay. Oh. A tulip. Lydia, what's a tulip? Good, it's a producer. You probably want to say it's a flower, but it's a producer. It makes its own food. A panther, Charlie. It is a consumer. Or, yeah. yeah, a consumer that is a carnivore. Very good. A giraffe, Abigail. Um, it's a consumer, and I think it's a herbivore. It is. You are correct. How about a worm? Ooh, Hudson. Good. It's a decomposer. A worm is a decomposer. So I want you to see, the big thing that I want you to pull from this, okay, is that they have an energy role to fill, producer, consumer, decomposer. All organisms within an ecosystem, all biotic factors, living things, are going to fill a certain energy role, okay? And then if it's a consumer, there are subcategories there. Okay, so you have seen these before. We're talking about food chains and food webs. The whole purpose of a food chain food web is to show how energy moves through an ecosystem. Okay, so go ahead and write this. The movement of energy through an ecosystem can be shown in diagrams called food chains and food webs. The movement of energy through an ecosystem can be shown in diagrams called food chains and food webs. and then we will do something like this tomorrow. A food chain is a series of events in which one organism <coughs> eats another and obtains energy. A food chain is a series of events in which one organism eats another and obtains energy. I'll read it one more time while you write. A food chain is a series of events in which one organism eats another and obtains energy. We're going
going to, but it's 9-12. So let me explain it, and then we'll start back on this slide tomorrow. The first, I want your attention, though, please. Don't start packing up just yet. So with a food chain, it's just showing just one path of energy, right? It's much easier to see a food chain okay, than a food web. This is kind of going all over the place. This is just showing a singular pathway. <clears throat> and these arrows okay, are representing what? Does anybody know what the arrows represent? is eaten by, but what's being transferred? Energy. Energy. Okay, so the arrows in a food chain or a food web represent energy. So when this mouse eats this cricket, okay, listen please. When this mouse eats this cricket, the arrow moves towards the mouse, not away from the mouse, even though he eats it, right? Why? Because the arrow represents energy. So it's showing you energy is being transferred from this cricket to the mouse. Okay, from the mouse to the snake. From the snake to the hawk. Okay, that is incredibly important. And the first organism is always a producer. You can go ahead and pack up. We will pick up here on Friday. Tomorrow we'll review.